You're welcome back. Let's now turn our focus to issues bordering on accountability. The official public declaration of assets and liabilities by a public servant is a major requirement of Nigerian constitution. It's mandatory for all elected public officers to collect and sign the form and also swear to the declaration before a high court judge before submitting it to the Code of Conduct Bureau, the CCB. Now, the CCB states that failure to declare one's assets would attract either a conviction, removal from office, disqualification from holding any public office, forfeiture of any property acquired in abuse of office, or dishonesty to the state, or all of the above. Indeed, the whole idea of this is to prevent corruption and abuse of office. But despite these clearly stated guidelines, many politicians still fall behind in fulfilling the requirements of the law. However, newly elected governor of Oyo State, Olusei Makinde, has publicly declared his assets. The assets declaration form shows that as at May 28, 2019, the former oil mogul was worth 48 billion naira. Makinde's actions have uh, generated different reactions from different quarters ever since. And while he's received con uh, commendations from some Nigerians and his party, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, others like opposition All Progressives Congress, APC, you know, your state are uh, asking the governor to explain the source of his wealth. They're also calling on relevant agencies to investigate his asset declaration form for transparency's sake. Joining me now to discuss this is Kingsley Udeze from Abuja. You're welcome to the program. Good afternoon and welcome to you. Too. So on this issue of Shay Makinde and his 48 billion naira asset declaration, were you surprised when you first heard about it? Well, it's certainly a large sum of money. But to my mind, if he's um, earned the money legitimately, it should not be a major problem. So long as the money has been earned through a proper um, life of um, applying himself in his job, in the industry he's in, and there are ways to ascertain that that's legitimate, there should not be any problem. Okay, apart from the amount of the money, I mean, 48 billion naira is no small sum. Apart from the amount of the money he, you know, he claims to have, according to the, uh, the asset declaration form he failed and uh, submitted in the state, what do you think about his action of making this public? Yes, he did promise the residents of Oyo State that he was going to do that. But did it come as a shock to you that he eventually took that step, seeing that he was the first governor in Oyo State to, to ever do that? Well, I think it's a, I, I, it didn't come as a shock to me because from limited understanding of what he's trying to do is that he's trying to establish a standard um, of being different from those who have gone before him, of increasing the level of probity and accountability. These are all very, very laudable things. So long as they are done with integrity and honesty, there should not be any problem with the fact that he has disclosed this information. It should be welcome, it should be encouraged, and certainly I think it's a good thing. Mm. You do say it should be welcomed, but we understand that several bodies are on the toes of, uh, uh, of uh, Makinde right now because Serap and the CCB say they want to investigate the source of his income. So how do you think this would influence other politicians? Would this not tend to discourage them from being open with their assets? Well, I, I actually think that him being questioned about the source of income is good for him and is good for everybody. There are two levels of concern that people have about um, the sources of income on one level, the sources of um, investments or whatever you want to call it that goes into Nigerian politics and where they came from is very important. And the second thing about the fact that people might... Um, inflate their income so that when they leave offices, it would accommodate whatever they've taken. So if, if the idea is to establish that this baseline of information is accurate and credible, then there's nothing wrong with that. And I don't think the new governor of Oyo State should be concerned about that or anybody else who is committed to improving the quality of our public life. It would be wrong to say, Oh, because I've been questioned about the source of my income, it's an inconvenience, so in future I will not disclose it. Um, that would be problematic. Of course, the, the, the 
space or uh, the, the law and the constitution allows for you not to disclose it publicly. But that willingness to disclose publicly should certainly be entertained and encouraged because that then starts to deal with the level of distrust and cynicism that um, pervades our politics at the moment. Mm, you, you did touch on an issue that has been, you know, in, in the eye of public discourse since uh, Mackinde actually uh, uh, declared his assets openly, which is that uh, people have been speculating that uh, it's not possible for him to have up to, you know, that amount in his account, you know, cash at hand and the rest. Do, do, you, do you doubt that figure in any way? I don't, because from what I know, he's been working in the oil industry for quite a while. The problem for us is that the oil industry is a very opaque industry. Um, people who work in the industry, uh, the sources, the, the volume of oil that is going out in the industry are very, very um, uh, um, not, they're not transparent to us. So the lack of understanding of it in the industry, the way wealth is, um, um, is generated in the industry lends to all of this suspicion. Nevertheless, we have to say we live in a time, or we have always lived in this country, where people are always suspicious of these kinds of things. I think it would be beneficial for us, it would be beneficial for us in real terms if we, if we recognize the other side of this debate, which is that we are setting something in motion. Okay that if it works, if it's true, might encourage people to work hard in legitimate ways to earn income. If it's established that his income is true and honest, then it's, it puts to bed this notion that for you to become rich in Nigeria, you have to become a rogue or corrupt. And if we can establish that he has done it well, well, then it bodes very well for those people who have applied themselves and are looking for ways to become rich as a result of hard work. Mm. So my hope is that when this all comes out of the wash, what would happen is that he would have established himself that what he has done and what he has earned is legitimate. Now for everybody else, whatever their political position, it, it, it now st sets a new standard. The one thing I have to say to the governor is that anybody who's going to pioneer something new must expect the kinds of scrutiny, questions, and suspicion that he's facing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good opportunity for him to build a legacy. So I, I'm hoping that we would all have a chance in due course to say we've crossed a particular um, um, a barrier in Nigeria in terms of accountability. All right. So we do know that uh, a public office holder is expected to, de to declare their assets uh, prior to, you know, uh, assuming that a political office and obviously after uh, their, their, their tenure expires. So basically when, you know, we see that, uh, that, that uh, the assets or income or, of such a politician, you know, is, is increasing, they tend to have to be a probe into their finances. Let's see if, they, if they've been corrupt or looted public funds and all of that. So, so basically, is, is that, is that, is that, does that mean that uh, a political office holder cannot legitimately increase their source of income while it's? Well, there's a problem with you increasing your wealth while you're in office, especially if that wealth itself is within your own capacity. Um, so you are managing your wealth, you are managing your business. Firstly, if you're a governor, you're not supposed to be engaging in any other business. The business of the public should be your first business. Secondly, if there are things that are working to earn your income, my own good practice would suggest that you put it in a kind of blind trust where you don't have direct access to the wealth yourself so that you are not using your influence as governor or using your influence in government to, to feather your own pocket. And the final point is that it is also very important that not that just that you are doing this honestly, but it has to be transparently be seen to be done. So these are all things that not duly practiced at the moment, but should be the things that we are looking out for as we go forward. All right, before I let you go, Ajadi, one more question. Do you think that uh, asset declaration by political office holders is one of the ways to check corruption in the country? 
Well, it certainly would increase transparency and accountability. Corruption is a very difficult thing to say we'll we forever get rid of, but it reduces chances of people getting away with corrupt practices. So it's a good step in the right direction. All right, thank you very much. That has been Adewale Ajadi from Abuja discussing the issue of Shaye Makinde and the highly controversial asset declaration of open $48 billion Naira for that matter. And uh, we'll take a break here, and when we return, we'll be back to discuss more. Do stay with us. On DG360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the Constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. Constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. While we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason why oh, this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that uh, <laughs> family. DG 360. Providing clarity to issues.